Last night I saw a movie named Christine. It's uh, about a woman named Christine Chubbuck, uh, who it's based on a true story, actually uh, lived uh, and died in, uh, in the 70s. Um, she was a hardworking news lady uh, at a small television station in Sarasota, Florida. <clears throat> and uh, she was um, obviously very smart and capable, but on the, on the other hand, uh, had a lot of demons and uh, it all, eventually her demons all caught up with her in a particularly uh, spectacular and also particularly uh, gruesome and macabre sort of way uh, in that she actually um, committed suicide on the air. She shot herself in the head in front of a live audience. And uh, I, I guess that's her, her claim to fame, not, not to not to laugh uh, or not to not to be to laugh cruelly or anything, but it is it is uh, kind of funny um, <laughs> uh, that, that that would be your your calling card, uh, you know, when you're no longer around. Uh, oh, yeah, that's she's the chick who shot herself on TV. Um, but, but there you go. Um, now the movie is uh, some a movie I highly recommend. It's really well made. <clears throat> it captures the authenticity of the period very well. <clears throat> I have very uh, vague memories of that that time period. I was alive, uh, so so you know it wasn't. It's not just from watching old movies that I that I know uh, the way people dressed and the way people decorated their homes. Uh, and so forth in, in 1974, 1975. But I, I had, again, very, very fuzzy memories from that that uh, era of, of time. Nevertheless, this movie captured, captures it all really well. Um, and uh, it's got a great soundtrack, you know, like uh, the, the songs that they, that they include uh, in, in a very um, naturalistic sort of way. You know, just, just like one of the characters listening to a song on the radio and singing along to it. You know, songs like, uh, uh, you, you fill up my, what is that John Denver song? You fill up my, sen you fill up my senses like a night in the forest. I thought it was like a light in the forest, but it's like a night in the forest. Ah, Mandela effect, maybe. Nah, uh, probably just, just, uh, just my, just an error on my part. Anyhow. Um, lots of moments like that, uh, that, that just reinforce the authenticity of the period. The movie also enables us to see what Christine is going through and to sympathize with her while also seeing that she's a really, really difficult person to get along with. Um, she's somebody that today would definitely be thought of as, uh, as on the spectrum and maybe she qualifies as a femme cell uh, of sorts. She uh, apparently had, had no, had very little, uh, uh, you know, at, well, well, at the age of 30, which is how old she was when she died. She was still a virgin. She had, had uh, she was single. She, she had, you know, very little contact uh, or very little experience in, the, in, in those, in the, with carnal matters. Um, but really for her, of course, as it is for all quote unquote fem cells, it wasn't really a question of not having anybody willing to, uh, uh, to be romantically interested in her. We see in the movie that one of the news guys, you know, really seems to like her. And generally speaking, most of her, her news comrades are, are really nice to her, but, uh, she still has these, these moods that, uh, you know, she, 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 uh, can't really control where she wants to, she wants to give the, the boss what he wants, but she also hates that, that, that the boss wants the, the news to be flashier. You know, she, she has this sense of integrity about what the news should really be like. And, and, um, but at the same time, she wants to be successful. So, uh, and she's got medical problems. Uh, she, she goes to the doctor for pains in the abdomen and, and the doctor tells her, 
that uh, she's probably going to need to have a hysterectomy. And, you know, she always, you know, part of what, she, part of what her notion of an ideal life was, was having a, 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 a husband and having children and also having a, a career. Um, so, yeah, something had to give somewhere. Uh, but, uh, but with her, you know, that, that, that wasn't, uh, uh, nothing, nothing really gave until she gave until her, her, her spirit gave. And, and, um, that's what, that's what the movie put me into this mind. Uh, when I, when it came to the final, um, few moments, like the last, uh, uh say 20 minutes or half an hour of the movie where, we see the trajectory that she's on and, uh, she suddenly becomes very, uh, calm and, uh, easygoing. And, uh, it's because she's contrived this idea of, of how to, how to go out that, that she's going to, she's with, with all of the pressures that she's facing and, and all of the disappointment that she has, generally speaking about about her life her work life and her love life and just about everything um up to this point she just she's hit upon this idea of going out with a bang literally um and that's where interestingly this this movie i i like to think of movie mashups sometimes you know just like they have song mashups uh where 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 you hear uh, uh you know some some, uh, you know, someone who knows how to mix music mashes up two songs that sound kind of similar, but are of very different genres. Uh, and it's really cool and it's really interesting. And it's like, it makes a new song. It also brings out something in the, the two songs that are mashed up that, that, uh, that, that, you know, uh, you, you hadn't really heard before. Um, and, but I've never heard of anything like that being done with with film with movies or with tv shows or or something like that and i don't really know how it would work exactly but i see this film uh actually mashing up with joker 2019 joker um uh quite uh quite well um in the in the the finale uh you know just like arthur fleck uh decides he's going to do something big once he transitions from Arthur Fleck and fully becomes Joker, for, fully embraces the persona of Joker, um, he decides that, and, and once he knows he's going to be on Murray's show, he he first his first uh, idea is to to uh, to kill himself on the air, similar to what Christine Chubbuck actually did. Um, and also interestingly, uh, you know, Joker is also a period piece. Uh, you know, it's, it's set in what looks to be the late seventies or the early eighties. I think they said it was, I think they actually say that it's in 1981, although it's in a, in an alternate world where there's a Gotham city, uh, you know, um, which is not New York city. It's, it's a different city, but you know, one that's teeming with all of the, this, the sort of, um, sort of blight and the, all of the all the kind of problems that uh, cities like New York had at, at around that time uh, so it's very again very very topical for that period in the same way that uh, Christine is topical and you know on a smaller scale doesn't have the same budget doesn't have the same you know broad vista uh, of uh, what it shows it's it's much more closed in and just about this one person and her her experiences and <clears throat> and so forth but but I, I i i really sensed this mashup uh uh you know in that it's they're both movies about characters who uh see their final trajectory coming uh who who, who at some point relinquish uh the, the, the fantasy that they had had in their minds or the, the, the dreams that they were pursuing with, with such tenacity, uh, you know, Arthur wanted to be a cl a clown or a comedian, make it big. And, and he, you know, he had all this 
kind of optimism, uh, in spite of the fact that, that everything things had gone so poorly for him in his life up to that point. Uh, and then he finds out the truth about who his mother really was. And, and, uh, you know, that, that sort of, uh, knocks him into, uh, into this, this whole other track or onto this whole other track where, where he decides to get rid of the last vestiges of Arthur Fleck and just become Joker full time. And Christine uh, Chubbuck in this movie, in, in Christine, also g- gets on a different trajectory um, in, the, in the final, uh, let's say, half hour uh, of the movie. Um, after one major disappointment where she thought the, 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 the dreamy guy that, that she worked with was... Uh, where he asks her out on a date and she thinks that, you know, things are going to, are finally going to work out the way she wants them to, you know, like, of course she, she turns down the, the guy that the, the, the less good looking guy, uh, at, at her, at her workplace. And, and she's, she's got to be, she's all about <laughs> the Chad. So again, the, 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 there's a difference between a, an incel and a so-called fem cell, but, but there you go. In any case, the, the date doesn't go the way she thought it would. It goes very weirdly. I don't even know how to describe it here. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the guy, we don't really know. He, he sort of is pretending to, to like her, but maybe he really does kind of like her, but, but he ends up it ends up just going very weirdly and not going the way she wants it to. Um, and she finds out that he's going to get promote. He's going to get the promotion that, that she wanted and that he's bringing along this, uh, this other woman, this, uh, the, 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 the woman who does sports, who's, who's more, much more conventionally good looking than she is. Uh, so that's like her, the, the final rejection that she can bear. Um, and she catapults into, this again, she, she's got this plan just like Joker does. Joker's plan is to go out with a bang, but uh, Joker, uh, eventually arrives at a different, he does go out with a bang, but it, 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 it's not, it ends up not being self-directed. It ends up being directed, uh, at, uh, the, uh, oops, 